Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Leonilo Bicapulso. I am the President and CEO of BN Books Publication here in Makabebe, Pampanga, and also registered in Colorado, USA. For this afternoon, I'll be sharing with you my insights about the topic. I am invited to share with you through the initiative of Sir Ron Virai. So I'll be sharing to you now my PowerPoint presentation. So I hope my PowerPoint presentation is visible to everyone. So the topic or the theme that was given to me is finding suitable technology, knowledge, innovation, pedagogy, and teaching practices during the post-pandemic. Basically, you would realize later on that um, the difference between teaching digital in the digital classroom and in the face-to-face -face classroom is basically only on the mechanisms. But as to the content, uh, it takes a lot of skill, of creativity from the teachers. So for today, I'll be sharing some learning principles and theories that are applied in technology-driven teaching and learning models. Explain, and for most of us, it will be a review on the Dale's Cone of Experience, TPAC, and Azure models. Uh, these are the kinds of learning principles that we need to embrace, okay, to incorporate in our learning materials in order to produce quality education. Also discuss strategies in order to enhance learner competencies using technology integration, innovation, and the like. Also, we will be uh, discussing and sharing uh, digital tools and technologies that are practical, relevant, and accessible and reliable to our target learners explain the positive impact of using technology in teaching learning process and how it yields academic excellence among learners. But uh, my time is very limited, so I'll try to skip some uh, items maybe that are not uh, very much relevant to our discussion. I'm supposed to have our activities, but I'll skip this part. No, I'm just supposed to know the best practices that you had in using technology in your digital or physical classroom. I want also to know the challenges that you encountered and the coping mechanism and the insights that you learned from these experiences because this will eventually make us realize what are the innovations that we need to adopt okay if there are any and the things that might be integrated in our classroom uh, encounter with our students before we proceed let's try to 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 see what uh, does research say about technology and education? May it be pre, during, and post-pandemic. For one studies, it says that the use of technology has made the process of teaching and learning all the more enjoyable. So this is a positive note on the use of technology in teaching. This was published in the Journal of Applied and Advanced Research entitled Impact of Modern Technology in Education. Another study conducted found out that modern technology indeed impact learning both positively and negatively. So take note the last three words there, positively and negatively. Uh, as much as we would like to embrace a full online mechanism as others would, would do, others would even go into a hybrid or high flex modality in order to have a balance. While the Department of Education now ordered the face-to-face -face classroom encounter with students because there are always positive and negative effects of uh, online and digital classroom as one of the studies uh, mentioned that full online modality sometimes is not totally sustainable students are sometimes saturated and they have the tendency to to withdraw okay from the encounter that's why if you try to ask teachers most of the problems they encountered our engagement of students and sometimes failure of students to submit requirements. The type of smartphone applications and how they use it determine the level of knowledge and overall grade achievement. So sometimes it depends on the kind of application. So not all technology integrated learning uh, will be bad, but it depends on the kind of application that the number of time or spent in front of the screen is also a variable. So the impact is mediated by the amount of time spent using such application. 
Okay? So when more time is spent on social application, the academic competence and classroom achievement will reduce, although the student may be good in social trend. That is when we are talking about social application. Mr. Kim, for example, one of the experts in technology said that indeed technology is changing the dynamics of education, especially the relationship between teachers and students. We see that shift no? when we were still teaching face-to-face -face prior to the two-year pandemic classroom. And now that we are uh, facing our students back again inside the classroom. So therefore, educators and administrators now who are listening, the deans, the, the principals, must be able to reshape educational spaces in order to provide a better learning experience to support educational evolution. And I would like to commend the, the leaders of Pampanga Colleges for being always attuned to the needs of the students. So that's exactly the reason why we are elevating. I saw some new classrooms being built. No, I, I, I hope it was already used as I go through that area. So all these things are something to do with the technology-based learning. So it constitutes the learning via electronic technology. May it be bulletin boards, chat rooms, webcasts, so on and so forth. So all this mechanism that incorporated technology could be part of technology-based learning. It encompasses related terms such as online learning, web-based learning, hybrid learning, high-flex learning. And what do we learn from this? Okay, how do we integrate technology in our classroom? As I would always say in all the webinars and lectures I've conducted, regardless of the mechanism and the classroom, we are meeting our students. See to it that the lessons we have shared with our students will always be based on learning principles because it will determine our strategy and the technology that we will be using. So I'll be sharing three maybe familiar but important uh, learning principles connected to technology. One is Dale's cone of experience. If you just try to look at the, the diagram, okay? So these are the one inside the triangle are the ones that we do as teachers. We ask our students to do inside our classroom. Sometimes we ask them to read a certain chapter to hear when somebody is reading for them, view images, watch videos, attend exhibits and sites, watch a demonstration. We do this in sciences participate in hands-on workshops, design collaborative lessons, stimulate, model, or experience a lesson, design, perform a presentation, do a real thing. You could realize that this tree is divided into three parts. Now, the first two, reading and hearing, in our lesson plan, we normally use these words like define, list, describe. And up to this point, only 20% of what our students learning or hearing are what they remember. Whereas, from viewing images up to watching a demonstration, up to 50% of what they see and hear, they will remember. But if you try to look at the bottom part, the last four uh, parts in the bottom, participating in hands-on, design collaborative lessons, simulate, design and perform, you are actually reaching up to 90% of the discussion to the 90% of students' tendency to remember. And this is where actually Bloom's taxonomy of education of learning coming in. No? We know now that the highest form of learning, according to Bloom, is creating. Creating, collaborating are basically part of the 21st century skills of our students. That is why some schools would normally ask students to create something as part of the lesson. No? Students are trying to translate what they have learned into something physical that could be basically beneficial to the community. So this is the bigger version. You could just uh, take a screen from there. So it was authored by Edgar Dale, as you know, an American educator who developed this theory. He believed that an individual learner retained more of the information when it is executed or put into practice. So dito pumapasok na yung ating prag pragmatism, learning by doing uh, principle. Okay, others would call it experimental learning or action learning or learning by doing. How do we integrate that in our teaching? Okay, there are other ways and different ways to incorporate that. Okay, like for example, if you're teaching TLE, okay, TVL, when teachers would try first to demonstrate and ask students to do it themselves, that's demonstration. And sometimes you ask students to create a model, their own model, that's actually applying what they have learned and creating something productive for the community and for the school. That's how you apply the cone experience. Although sometimes 
because of the scarcity of time, we don't have the, 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 the luxury of time to ask our students to do this. So we ask them to do it also at home. And we allow parents also to cooperate. Not that parents will do that, but parents are there to, to facilitate, just like what we've been doing for the last two years. Okay. So next is the TPAC, TPAC model. That's technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge. Dito simple lang yung sinasabi. Hindi, kaila, hindi garantiya na kapag ang isang teacher, halimbawa, you graduated with Latin honors, you're a good teacher. No. You might have a lot of things to know, but how you translate it for your students to learn is another story. TPAC model said that learning only takes place when there is an intermarriage of technology, of pedagogy, and content knowledge. That is why in senior high school, in college, for example, okay, uh, there is what you call a major field of expertise because you hire teachers who are experts in that field. That is where the content knowledge is. However, how to translate this to students for them to learn, it takes a lot of skills. That's pedagogy. Okay, dito pumapasok yung ating teaching strategies. And now, because of the advent of technology, okay, for the past two years and even now, okay, the, the kind of technology that the teachers will integrate into their lesson would depend on the lesson itself. No, that is why it takes a lot of mastery of the subject matter for the teacher to determine what kind of technology should be integrated. Okay, so that is the TPAC model. So it simply shows that for a learning to be productive and quality learning to happen, there must be an intermarriage of technology, pedagogy, and content. And this is how you're going to do it. So um, I, I had it in the screen. The, 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 the sources are there. You could just visit the site also. Okay, And that's how we... Uh, incorporate technological, pedagogical content knowledge or the TPAC model into our class. The last is Assure model. Assure model when I was still in the Department of Education, I, I resigned in 2021 of October. One of, for me, the most detailed lesson plan or learning plan that I used and I asked my teachers as a master teacher then to use an Assure model. The good thing about Assure model is that it also recognizes the different learning styles of your students. So when you are preparing your lesson, when you're preparing your performance tasks, which are actually in line with your objectives, with your performance standards, okay, you consider first the kind of students that you have, okay, their learning styles, their socioeconomic background. Okay, so Assure model would analyze the learners. Okay, this is where you determine who are your students who would learn when they act, when they touch, when they sing, so on and so forth. Then you state your objective. Here, selecting media and materials to be used would also depend on your objective. Dito papasok yung sinasabi natin na technological knowledge and also the content knowledge. Because as I mentioned earlier in the TPAC model, the kind of technology that you use would determine on the kind of lesson. Hindi kasi pwede na itong technology na ito gagamitin mo sa lahat ng subjects, hindi naman pwedeng ganun because sometimes it's not relevant or hindi siya applicable. Then utilize the media and materials that require learner participation. Here, this is where performance output is coming in. Dito na pumapasok yung ating mga formative assessment. We ask students so far how they are doing with our class and in the performance task, sabi ko nga, we... we we give performance tasks based on our objective in consideration with the student's learning styles. And then we evaluate and revise. If we think that some students are not getting our, our discussion, then we may, we may as well do some remediation or we could even reteach the, the subject. Okay, This is how you're going to, uh, to put a sure model into your class. So I'll give you time to, to grab the the screen well, to have a screenshot so that you will see how to assure to apply assure model in your class okay so basically an assure model is an instructional system design isd with that number of steps okay its main aim is to produce more effective teaching and learning which is appropriate to student using technology that is also included there so the kind of technology that you will use would determine also on the socioeconomic status of your students. Halimbawa, ang ganda-ganda nga ng application na gagamitin mo, yung mga estudyante mo naman ay walang internet. So you must be very creative also and do your lesson in the context of, of your student. 
So I will not uh, repeat this part, okay? And this is how you're going to do your uh, Azure model. I will not discuss that because I only have 20 minutes. Now, let's try to discuss the eight ways to embrace technology based on learning approaches. Now, having in mind, okay, that learning strategies, okay, you already know the, the basic, at least learning uh, theories that you need. So regardless of your lesson, okay, you only have to determine which learning principles you will apply. So you know that by count uh, of experience learning principle, you know that the more students are involved in the classroom, the more likely they will learn. And we also learn in TPAC model that for the, for the quality learning experience to take place, there should be an intermarriage of technolog technological knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and content knowledge. In the Azure model, we also determine and said that uh, before you apply technology and pedagogy, you must be able to, to, to first assess the kind of learners that you have, and then you, you will be introducing technology and pedagogy based on their needs. The, these are the eight basic steps and ways on how you're going to embrace technology based uh, technology based learning approaches. Okay, so in short, okay, here they are. Okay, so problem based learning, student created content, collaborative learning, integrated subjects, active learning, competency based education, flipped learning, and blended learning. When you are going to incorporate these ways of technology based learning in your lesson. I will assure you that this will also touch into the 21st century skills, particularly 21st literacy ICT related skills. Okay, so number one, problem based learning. So, in the problem based learning, there is a movement from teaching facts and the use of assessment based learning to competency development. So, that's where the movement is coming from. So in problem-based learning, you don't just feed student information. You ask, you, you give students a problem. And from that problem, students are able to conceptualize ways in order to solve the problem. Actually, this is where collaboration is coming in. So it could be done in a group. So for example, ang pwede natin gawin, itong problema dito sa Makabebe, lalong-lalo na dito sa San Gabriel. Okay, kapag mataas yung, yung lupa, okay, yung yung tambak dito sa sa plaza bumabaha dito sa latter part sa may simbahan ng San Gabriel pag tinaas naman dito yung bumababa kay paulit-ulit lang gumagastos lang tayo parang nasasayang lang yung pera ano kaya yung pwedeng gawin o di ba magandang itanong natin sa mga estudyante they might you might be wondering sometimes you might be shocked of their of their solution and then by by trying to share their own concepts, their their understanding, their ways of solving a problem, you are developing communication as one of the twenty first skill. So there, you are already uh, touching a critical thinking in the problem solving, collaboration when you do their project and communication. Okay, to move towards student centered design. So from teacher centered to student centered learning experiences. So the aim is critical examination of the problem. So by this, you are preparing students to think creatively, find solution to complex issues for future events. Okay, so you can also even give students a problem related to the problem inside the classroom or inside the school. Technology allows students to approach or issue facilitates uh, communication in global perspective. And then that is where you incorporate, you inject technology. So you could ask students, for example, to use applications that they know in order to solve that particular problem. Number two is student-created content. Here, technology-based approaches offer opportunities for students to create their own content. Hindi lang kasi pwedeng tayo lang, di ba? Normally, we are asked to provide our curriculum for the students. But why don't we ask our students also to contribute within the classroom, throughout the school, online learning platforms, and LMS? How, how do you do this? When you are presenting your, for example, your curriculum for a student for a particular lesson, you could ask their suggestions. What do you think other topic we could add? Okay, based on your experience. So you're allowing now students to be part of the learning, okay, of, of this educational system. Okay, so teachers should reinforce the content to ensure understanding among learners. Because when, 
when you ask students if they have some suggestions, that may, for them to suggest, they must be able first to understand the concept you are presenting. Okay, so you are ensuring then the understanding of the student of the learning, allow group sharing of insight among peers. So among themselves, they could also think, okay, and, and, and share their ideas, how they are going to make the best out of the content you have presented. And that will basically bring down to recycling of acquired material, okay, provide different viewpoints of learning, sharing different strategies. You don't know that students might have other ways of doing things. Now, I'm um, now i had been watching some uh, television series. If you know this TV series where an autistic uh, attorney, lawyer who topped the bar no? in Korea, he almost perfect the bar exams, he graduated magna cum laude. And in one of the cases that they presented is a mother who owned a school, yung kanyang anak kinidnap yung mga estudyante and he was charged of kidnapping. But later on, the 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 court realized that what the, the son of the owner just did is to promote the value of, of play, of game among students. Because in this school, the school is a very well-known school, but students don't have time to, to, to play. Okay, Even the, the time of, of, uh, of break, break time, their time to eat is also limited. So here, you might be wondering sometimes that your student might have other different strategies of making the best of your classes. So. There are, for example, an application, this one, oh, my simple show makes e-learning simple. So th there is the source you could look into it, no? Kung paano nyo, how would you allow students to participate using this application? The, the source is there, so you could just open and look it in the Google. No? So collaborative learning, enabled through technology communication like Skype, Face, FaceTime, LMS, and other systems. Okay, so collaborative learning and daming paraan like Google Forms, Google Classroom. Ito yung mga for those who could afford for asynchronous learning where a teacher, for example, uh, put a discussion or a question and discussion board and then students started to answer to the teacher, answer to one another. There is a mechanism in how to grade student based on how they, inter, inter, uh, how they interact and they engage with one another. So they are actually scored. So collaborative approaches caters to different preferences of learner. It will also strengthen intercultural understanding beyond the classroom. So because we know our students are coming from different perspective, socioeconomic status, even their, their, their creed, no? their, their, their faith are coming from different uh, religions. So they might also be sharing their understanding of things based on their religion. And that's basically allowing students to become more collaborative and creative. So it encourages collaboration beyond borders. So it broadens views, raise awareness, exploring cultures. Cultures mean here could mean local cultures. But if your students later on would be engaging in the, for example, in the digital classroom with, with other universities, this may also bring about exploring culture, not only the culture of Pampanga colleges, but also of other universities, different habits and global themes, particularly if you allow them to benchmark with other universities outside the country. Fourth is competency-based education, which aims to focus on effective learning versus time-based learning. Dito tayo na min minsan na pressure kasi may time limit. Okay, within uh, three, uh, two months, dapat tapos na yung ganitong term, dapat na tapos na. And we have the tendency sometimes to be very fast in our discussion. But because sometimes we, we like the topic, we, we also have the tendency to overdwell. Okay, so by uh, competency-based education, you are actually uh, leading towards e-learning platforms, digital lecturing, and in-person teaching. So you would realize this is a combination. So meron siyang e-learning platforms, the one that you have, your LMS, digital lecturing, you could do flip top or flip classroom. Okay, the flip classroom we, we didn't discuss much, but I think we the daana natin siya mamaya. Okay, so and in person teaching, itong digital lecturing sometimes ideal kapag yung mga estudyante nyo halimbawa ay mga working students and they cannot do all those things in the class, so they can do it at home. And then when they go to the class, they just have to participate what they have understood in the uh, in the videos, for example, you assign them to read. Okay, in the competency based. Uh, education, it is actually um, 
a struggle between credit our teaching time limitation to the individual content bound approach. So, so this is where quality work, okay? So less time factor is an open learning outcomes. So ano ba yung mahalaga sa iyo? Yung yung nakakasabay ka doon sa required number of hours pero nako-compromise yung quality of education or hindi naman talaga kailangan na na doon ka pero you still are able to to develop to deliver quality education. Okay. In the competency-based education, that's loosening time plus location equals less stress and more efficient learning. That brings about mastery of the subject matter. Okay, number five. Okay, we only have eight. No active learning. Active learning pertains on the hands-on learning. Students learn by experience. Dito yung sinasabi natin kanina. Learning by doing. Trying different learning methods, supporting each other's ideas allowing space to think and act for themselves. This is what students do. Okay, in the active learning, the role of the teacher is to guide versus an active player. Assist when needed and support when required. Open for adaptation and student input. So here, you allow students to suggest technology for learning. So you must ask your students, ano ba yung mga bago, ano yung mga applications na nagamit nila na pwede yung gamitin sa classroom. Number six, blended learning. Blended learning, we've been doing this for the past two years. It's a combination simply of an online digital media plus traditional classroom. Okay, others would um, would call this hybrid classroom. Okay, for example, in law school. Now, uh, some of our classmates might be attending class face-to-face -face, while some of us might be attending via Zoom. So this is a hybrid learning. Physical present, teacher and student contents plus students' activities is done digitally. So there is also the idea of multiple modal approaches. So learning at home, use digital tools and platforms plus assignments. You can do this by video and film viewing. So connected to sa flip classroom. Ibig sabihin, si teacher po pwede siya mag-assign mag, uh, mag ng mga videos na ginawa niya. Pwede niya i-record yung sarili niya. Or he could even use some other sources and platforms and then ask students to read under free time. And then just answer some questions inside the classroom or during the face-to-face -face classes. This is the combined learning experiences that will equate to complement and supplement each other. Okay? Ito yung sinasabi natin. A blended a flip learning or a flip classroom is the reverse of the traditional classroom. Ang nangyayari, the students are doing their readings at home, viewing videos, then the discussions are done inside the classroom when they go to school. So they're applying their learning plus increasing students and teachers' classroom interaction. So mas marami na ngayong oras si teacher mag-interact with the students, mag-collaborate with, with other classmates. How? Students' digital information micro learning techniques like videos in specific topic at home, as I mentioned earlier. So um, content is discussed inside the class, okay? Uh, in detail, explored the following day. For last is the integrated subject, okay? Students create their own learning materials to use in their learning away from targeted and subject-oriented approaches. It moves towards integrated Cruise curricular study that better resembles the interconnected world we live in. It is here where teachers has to collaborate with other teachers as to presenting an idea para ma to also to minimize time. One subject could also be collaborated with other teachers, even in the presentation of projects. So for example, in doing action research or in doing practical research in senior high or research in college, po pwede na yung project nilang research project na nila, for example, sa English. So the English teacher will be the one to check the grammar, the construction, while the research teacher will be the one to check the technicalities of research. Also, mathematics teachers could check the, the, the statistics being used. So that's how you do it. Okay. So aspect from different area combined in different technologies, as mentioned. So plentiful benefits of technology, innovation, and learning is of creation, embracing international social context, providing new resources and understanding increased access to information. Here, uh, teachers could actually explore also on different technologies where students can collaborate in a particular subject or subjects that will also lessen their time to do activities because one subject or one project can be utilized by different, uh, uh, different teachers. Okay. Now, uh, as much as I would like to stay, okay, I, I want to, to end. No? Allow me to, to end my presentation. Okay. 
So in closing, we said that using technology to increase efficiency in areas where teachers and students have capacity to do so while empowering learners and communities to create positive learning environment in which students can grow. In other words, the kind of technology that we use would always be in consideration with, with the situation, with the social cultural context of our student, as long as students are able to learn and students can grow without prejudice, okay, without providing them hostile environment. Okay, it should not sacrifice quality. Okay, the use of technology will not compromise quality. Kaya kung hindi talaga kailangan, you could always go back to the traditional one. Okay, when we started in the Department of Education, hindi naman kami nagsimula sa TV-based instruction. We started with printed module, deliver it to different communities, but continue to provide equal opportunity. So this is where equity comes in. So your quality education should respond to the needs of the rich and the poor, most especially to the marginalized and vulnerable sectors that according to to chain. So and always remember that there is no one size fits all technology, but one that is dependent on the needs of its learning community. So at the end of the day, students should always be at the center of our discussion. So with that, thank you very much for allowing me to share my insights on this. And hopefully to see you soon personally after a few days, okay, when everything is finalized. So once again, good afternoon, everyone from teachers, particularly Sir Ron Birai for inviting me, administrators of Pampanga Colleges, all the teachers and students who are listening. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Capolso from Beyond Books Publications.